Hi there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, and in this video today, we're going to try and fix up this MacBook here. This is one with a touch bar and it's completely dead. Apple wanted £460 to repair this, or they offered £40 to recycle it. Uh, the owner of it didn't accept either of them and thought it would be better to give it to me. But when we bring it over to the blue mat, I'll actually read out the email. And hopefully, if it's possible that it can be fixed, then it might end up with a family where hopefully it will get plenty of use. Let's get started. Right, so if we turn it on, nothing's happening here. I think Mike did say if I do get it working that it probably will be locked, but that's fine because I can speak to him and we can get that sorted. So uh, let me read out the email and then we'll plug it in and we'll see if it's actually drawing any out here. Right, okay, I won't put it up on screen because there's private information on it, but it says that uh, he's a long time subscriber and that he has a MacBook Pro with a touch bar which has stopped working. I have a few MacBooks, no idea why, I just love tech and this particular one I have charged maybe 20 times max, but when I went to charge it up to donate it to a Ukrainian family in his village, it wouldn't charge. He took it to his local Apple store, I won't say where it is, and they said it's dead. The cost to have a look into the fort was £460, or they would give me £40 cash to recycle. I didn't take them up on their deal. I am, however, happy to send it to you if you would like it for a video. And then he says that uh, uh, if it's of interest, he'll pack it up and send it to me. No problem if you cannot fix it, just keep it for spare. So obviously, I will do my very best to fix it. If I can fix it, of course, I'll give it back to Mike. He can pass it on to the Ukrainian family. But, Chances are I probably can't fix it. But what I do like about this one is it's an honest fault. Apart from Apple, nobody's looked at it, which is amazing, because whenever I buy something that's off eBay, and you know full well that that's been looked at many times before it's ended up on eBay, sometimes you can get lucky, but a lot of times it's already been through professional hands. And so when it comes to someone like me, it's a complete nightmare. But with this one here, it should be just an honest fault. So let's plug this in, let's plug this in, and see what it's doing. This is the model number in case you're interested, A1706, and then it's EMC3071. I think it's from late 2016, early 2017. It's a very nice looking laptop. Right, let's see what it's doing. Okay. Five volts, is it going to, it's gone to 20 volts. It's gone to 20 volts, which is good. But it's very low on the amps. Hmm. But it has gone to 20 volts. Apparently they checked all four ports and it, it didn't work in, in any of them. Do you know what I'm immediately thinking? I'm wondering whether or not it's a battery problem. Because maybe if it hasn't been used in ages, maybe the battery's completely depleted. Mind you, if we take it apart, unplug the battery, then it should jump up, shouldn't it? Why is it not jumping up now? Is it if the battery's too low, it won't even try to charge it? Do you know what? I've done a few MacBooks, but because it's so long in between each one, I kind of lose track of where I am. Anyway, let's take the back off and see if anything becomes obvious. And while we're doing that, we'll give a shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive. And this month they consist of kitsdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeebs.com, King Kerr from Lowbook Auto Sales, DJ VG, Stuart Park, Ellis Garbutt, Pig Z, the My Mate Vince Fan Club, Braden Butts from Connecticut, Kenneth Blundstrop Sorensen, Simba Tinabu, Gabe McCandless and Extrim 401. Big thank you guys. Now let's see what lurks inside this MacBook. No signs of water damage there, but there is something just there. But I think it's just a, where is that now? I think it's just a crumb. Yeah. Right. Have a look now. So we're still charging really, really low down here. Can't see anything obvious. No, I can't. So should we disconnect the battery? So I've got to undo this one here. And now undo this one. Let me get a little torx bit. Now I suppose I better unplug it for this bit here.
There we go, right, that's the battery disconnected. So now let's plug it back in. Is it going to do anything? So it's still charging the same. Just trying to turn it on. So whether the battery's plugged in or unplugged, it's still doing the same thing. Makes no difference at all. Now I can't measure voltage on these batteries, can I? Let me just get my multimeter. I don't know if you can go straight onto the pads or not. And there's nothing there, but I don't know whether, I don't know if it's as simple as that. I don't know if something has to be enabled for that to release the voltage, I don't know. Uh, should we, let's measure for voltage around, I'll tell you what, let's plug the battery back in. Let's try to get a few voltage measurements. Right, so there's a little green thing down here, I presume this is some sort of fuse, so I'm just going to use a ground. Right, we have nothing there. Right, well, do you know what? I don't think it's just a battery problem because we've got no voltage anywhere on this board. I would love, imagine if there was a shorted capacitor. But would it give us that read in here? Or does it depend on where the short is? There's no voltage in here. Nothing at all. Right, okay, I'm just gonna plug, unplug that a minute. Let's just go to ohms and let's see whether there's any uh, shorts that I can see. No, see five ohms is not gonna be a short. If it was like less than one ohm, then that would suggest a, uh, a short. Hmm, now that doesn't look right, does it? See that capacitor there? On the positive side, it's 0.6 of an ohm. And on the negative side, it's uh, 0.2. Now does that suggest that maybe we've got a short there? Because that's very, very low. Look at that across the capacitor. 0.7, I'm not saying it's that capacitor, but uh, that is very low. Do you know what? I shouldn't have done those measurements with the battery plugged in, should I? That was a waste of time. Because maybe there is a bit of power in the battery. All right, let's have a look now. No, that's not right. I don't think that's right. I'm just having a look around the area. My eye is drawn to that cap there. This one here looks a little bit, does it look a bit discolored? Right, okay, what should I do? I think I'm going to take the board out completely. 
just to see when we disconnect other things whether or not the short disappears. Maybe we should do that. Right, now that I've just got a few cables disconnected, I want to see if it's doing anything different. No. Well, that's weird. That's just an empty connector. That doesn't do anything. Where's the, uh, where's the fan? Where's the little cable that feeds the fan? Odd. Right, so it's still not uh, still not turning on. Now I'm just gonna have a look over the board, see if I can find anything that's jumping out. Right, so this is the board eight two zero 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 two three nine. Everything just looks immaculate. Well, let's see if we still got those shorts down here. Yeah, so really, there's not a huge amount of difference either side of them. Yeah, considering right now if I touch my leads, they're measuring that. Do you know what I mean? So my leads are already measuring 2 ohms and these are measuring 2.6 uh, ohms. Right, okay. Do you know what? My friend did lend me a Fleur cam. So, shall I plug it in and uh, see if I can get anything on the Fleur cam? See maybe if we can see something here heat up just when we plug this in. Okay, forgive me because I'm not really uh, used to this yet. Let me just see what's uh, see what's happening. Mm, I don't think it's showing anything up. Is it getting warm down here? I don't get it. Far away it seems to be warm, but then when I go closer, it doesn't, uh, doesn't seem to be showing anything. See how hot my finger is? Yeah, look at that. Yeah, I don't think there's anything on that board getting warm. Let's uh, flip, flip it over. showing anything up. Well I think we need to go across the power rails and see if it leads us to this, this area here. I still think there's something not quite right here but uh, I don't want to just start removing ones because loads of them appear to be shorting. I just out of interest look that isn't for the fan here that one goes up to here which is going to be something maybe to do with the would that be the something with the touch bar maybe so, uh, yeah, I don't really know where the fan is powered from, looking at it here. But whatever it is, it's the same on both sides. Oh, here we go, it just comes down onto these ones here. So, yeah, maybe they must then feed through this board and feed onto maybe here. Okay, so remember now, it's that capacitor there and also that one there that I'm interested in. So, if we go up to... The Flex Board View software from Paul Daniels. If you haven't already checked out his YouTube channel, please check it out. Also, he does this great software which ties in the board view into the schematics, so it just makes it a lot easier. He's probably my favorite Australian person. 
maybe after Margot Robbie. Anyway, if we have a look here now, zoom in down here. Apologies for the awkward filming, I'm doing this one handed. So this is the capacitor here, yeah? And if we click on it, you will see that that side there is ground. But look at this side. It's PP bus G3 hot. So that's fantastic. So I think that's like one of the main rails, uh, one of the main early rails. And if we were to go over to the schematics, can you see here? PP bus G3 hot should be 13 volts. 13.1 volts. Uh, but remember, we've got a, a ground that's pretty much grounded, so that is our problem there, I'm pretty sure. I just now need to work out where it is. So what I might do to begin with is, it's not coming up in like millions and millions of places, so I think I'm going to zoom in on the board, and then I'm just going to zoom in here, and for example, check this capacitor, see what it looks like. You never know, we might actually see something that's faulty, rather than trying to add voltage in and check for heat and stuff like that. We might be able to visually see the fault because it's not coming up in that many places. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to zoom in and then we can compare. We can have a look around at the capacitors and stuff and see if we can see anything that looks a bit dodgy. So on this bit here, I'm just fast forwarding through it, but basically I look at every single capacitor, resistor, everything that's on that circuit. I mean, it's going to be a, a capacitor, isn't it, if it's going to be shorted to ground, but it could also be a chip. And uh, all of that PP bus G3 hot to me looks good. So then I have to resort to voltage injection because a visual check isn't showing anything. And also the FLIR cam, in my opinion, is not showing anything. So uh, yeah, time to uh, bring out the voltage injection. Right, so annoyingly, I can't actually see anything wrong there. So we're going to have to go for voltage injection. So I'm going to get my soldering iron on, and then we'll go on to a suitable, uh, a suitable place. Where can we just go on to? What would be easy for me? Should we do this side of the fuse? Or should we go on something a bit bigger? I think the easiest place to put the wire would be in between these two capacitors, because they're both on the same pad. That one, that one, and that one are all together anyway. So let's put a lump of solder there and put the voltage into there. Now I'm only going to put one volt in, because although it's 13.1 volts on this line, I don't know what it's shorted to, so I might end up putting the, if I put 13 volts in, I might then end up putting that into something else and fry something. Actually, do you know what, I'm going to do it myself a ground as well. Oh, I thought that was ground up there, it's not. That is though. Now I could use the FLIR cam for this, but I think I'm just going to try to do it with my fingers to begin with. Right, so I've got one volt at two amps. Let's see what's going to happen. Right, so just to clear up what I'm doing here, I've got a lead connected to the short, and I've also got a lead connected to the ground. Then when I force voltage into it, because what's happening is the MacBook isn't forcing voltage in because it's recognizing a fault and it's stopping the voltage. So if I force it with a bench power supply, then it's gonna force one volt at two amps through the faulty component because it's gonna to wanna to make its way the quickest to ground that it can, and that will be through the shorted component. So really, we should see some heat build up when we do one volt at two amps. If not, I may have to up the amps. Right, let's draw in two amps straight away, so it's gone to constant current, but it is at, I can show you. 
There you go. Yeah, so one volt at two amps, but it is constant current, so uh, yeah. So it must have kicked into constant current nearly, uh, you know, it, just a, a little bit more and it would be at the one volt. So now, is anything getting warm? No. Oh, yes. Yes, something's getting warm. Yes. Now, where are you coming from? Oh, something is getting warm up here. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something's getting very warm. Something's getting very warm. Let's get the IPA out. Quickly, quickly, where's my IPA? No, it's in the roller. Hold on. No, oh, okay. wait. I've got it here, I brought it home. I don't go anywhere without my IPA. Oh wow, imagine if it was a capacitor. So it's somewhere up here. I think, and this is the other side. Let's zoom right in and see if we can see it evaporate off. This capacitor, is it this one here? It's this one here, isn't it? Right, let me just double check. I think it is that one there. You see, straight away it's going from, so watch, if I wet these ones, you see it's not going, but watch this, straight away when I wet that, it's gone. Amazing, and is it broken here? I think it might be. Right, let's double check, see if that is on that same line. I'm gonna kill my power supply, because I don't wanna uh, you know, damage anything else. Now, where are we? One second now. Right, if I'm not mistaken, that one there, the bottom one, which is what's getting warm, is C7491. But when I click on this, there's a PP bus HS CPU. Hmm, I wonder, so is that fed then from the, uh, let's click on that. Let's go to uh, search for that capacitor. So it's this one here. GT and GTX power block. Uh, is this fed from PP bus? No. But PP bus HS CPU might be fed from the PP bus, which is shorted. Hmm. Well, I was expecting to see something on that rail. Not something here, but I suppose if something further down the line has shorted, it's also going to drag the rail before it down, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, isn't it? Of course, yeah. So, uh, okay, well, yeah, power injection, voltage injection there looked like it did the job, but yeah, it's this one here. Let's pop it out and then see if the uh, short disappears. I've zoomed in on my microscope just to show you, and you can definitely see the damage here, can't you? Look at that there. There you go, check that out. Yeah, so what caused that to blow? Who knows? Just, uh, I don't know, it just happens sometimes. 
Everything looks a little bit crooked around it, doesn't it? But we are talking tiny, tiny components. Look at the size of my dirty nail from working on the car. Okay, let's get some flux on that, take that off, and then see if the short and pee-pee bus disappears. Right, purely because we've got like a plastic connector here, we've just got a little cover, not that it matters for one of these, uh, I presume it's just sort of a standoff post. But uh, I think I'm gonna just try to remove it with some low melt solar, just to see if it works. If not, I'll get the heat on it. There we go. I left a bit of the capacitor behind on this pad here. I just want to see if I can remove it. There we go, it's off. That's it there. Right, that is off. It came off nice and easy, didn't it? Let me just clean that with some solder wick. So now I'm not saying it's gonna work, but already I love this one here, you see, because it's a real fault. There's no way this would have made it onto eBay. No way. And that's what's so nice. Apple wanted 460 pounds. Imagine if it was just that one capacitor. That's, uh, that's at fault. So let's see now if we turn on here. Let's just go onto these pads here. So we should have, which should be ground? One second now, let me see what should be ground. Ground, so the left should be ground. So if I go between here and here, we should have a nice low, there you go, 0.24, and now here, please be high. Yes, look at that, excellent. Right, now let's go on to our original one. We can actually go straight onto here, can't we? So here, and sorry, but well it doesn't make a difference which way around, here and here. Oh, look at that, brilliant. Fantastic. So that short's gone. I can't plug it in because I've got all these shorted. Well, I suppose I could, but I've got all these shorted here. Let's clean up this mess that's going on down here. There we go. Remember across this capacitor it was two ohms before? Now it's in the mega ohms. Excellent. I am getting my hopes up. I think it might be fixed. Let's clean up this mess. Okay, so you can see now that the blobber solder's gone between all of the ones there. Now let's uh, plug it in and see what it does. Place your bets. What do you think? I think it's going to be charging up more than uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.04 amps or whatever it was before. 
Come on now. Come on. There you go. Yes, 70 something. Look at that. Brilliant. I reckon that means it's gonna be on. Look at that. Wasn't doing that before. Right, let's get this back in. It might well be fixed. Be, oh no, no, I need to get a capacitor. I need to get a capacitor. Uh, it will probably work without it, but really I need to get a capacitor for that. So what are you? Let's have a look. You are a 33 microfarad, 16 volt tantalum poly. Right, so I'm gonna to have to search for that and see if I've got it on one of my other boards. Bear with me, that's actually gonna take me quite some time because I need to drag my boards out to see what I've got. Bear with me. Right, good news, looks like I've found a capacitor that will do. So I went up to search, go to find a part. I just typed in 33 UF microfarad and then it brings up all the boards that would have 33 UF. Obviously it doesn't mean it's gonna have the correct voltage and stuff, but I looked at my boards and one of my boards is this one here. And then uh, when I went onto this one here, you see what will bring up different ones and I can go to next and next and next. And anyway, if I go back one, you will see here that we have 33 UF and the one I'm looking for is, it says 20% and it says 16 volt and it says Tant Poly. Well this just, just say Tant, uh, it doesn't say Poly, but you can see it's 16 volts and it is also uh, 33 microfarad. And that corresponds to, well all you've got to do is then go to that one, search it on here and it's coming up as, I think it was this one here. So, when you look down here, it's going to be one of these little fellas. Just need to double check, I think it's that top one on the right. And if you have a look, they look to be the same size as the 41 here. So that's the 41 just there. So I'm going to take whichever one it is, I think it's that top right one, and we need to pop it onto the, uh, this board here. So I use a bit of flux and heat to remove it from the faulty donor board because I don't care about that one. And then when I put it onto the good board, Mike's board, I'm using flux and leaded solder. So now you can see it's in place. It's time to put it back together and test. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done. All the good times just begun. We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright That's it. Oh, here goes, right now. I won't put the back case on just yet. Or actually, I suppose I... No, I won't put it on just yet. Are we gonna have life? Come on. Let's see what it does here to begin with. Five volts, 20 volts, 0 0.7, 0 0.87, come on. There you go, I heard something. Is that just the charging sound? Fantastic, unbelievable, wow. Right, well look at that, it's pretty quick. Actually, I might have to cover up what's on here, bear with me. Right, there you go, hold on now, one second. Look at that. Fantastic. And my cursor's there. Result. So I presume once the battery's fully charged, then uh, I think this is going to be working just fine. Uh, I do need to have uh, his password to get into it, which I haven't got. 
But that is amazing. Let me put the back cover back on and then uh, let's finish up this video. I'm just gonna shut down. Okay, it's quite a few hours later now. Watched a bit of Stranger Things and uh, let it charge up to 100% and then closed the lid. So it went to sleep and now check it out. It's waking up and appears to be working just fine. Haven't got the password, I'll leave up that obviously up to Mike, but you can see now 97% there. So very, very happy with that. Really, that's the kind of ideal fix because Apple wanted 460 pounds and look what was wrong with it. That tiny little capacitor there, which I'm sure you would be able to buy for well under one UK pound or one US dollar or one euro. You could probably get a whole pack of them for that. So uh, yeah, really, really good. I love faults like that. And really, you don't need too much specialist equipment there. You can see that, yes, I did use the schematics to help me, but I found that short just at the beginning, just from measuring with the multimeter. And you know, even a very cheap multimeter would do that. And then yes, I did have to put voltage injection into it, but even just on one volt there, two amps, you've seen, that's not gonna cause any damage anywhere, and you've seen then that I felt the warmth with my finger and then use an IPA, isopropyl alcohol, which is really cheap. Again, you could see then that, uh, you know, what was wrong with it. Obviously you need some like soldering irons and stuff to uh, hot air to put the new capacitor on. But yeah, I, I just, I love, I love faults like that. And it just shows you that when it's an honest fault, you have so much more chance of fixing it. Obviously honest faults can still sometimes be unfixable. It's just that when you're buying off eBay, you really are lessening your chances of having uh, an item that is repairable, in my opinion, when it's an expensive item to begin with. But that is it for this video. Massive thanks to Mike for dropping this over to me. Looking forward to giving it back to you, Mike, in good working order. And hopefully the new family will have many months, hopefully years of use out of it. So I hope the rest of you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and think about subscribing. I will hopefully see you all very soon. Take care.